I set out a challenge for myself and bought an old analog camera for $30. Why? Because I wanted to find out if I could achieve results on par with present day digital technology. So stay tuned and find out if I was successful. With this challenge, I want to prove to you that you do not always need high-end expensive digital cameras to achieve perfect results. Now, this of course is dependent on the type of photography and also your understanding of film photography. And to that extent, also understanding the limitations and the potential of the camera you choose. Now, without further ado, Let's have a closer look at my camera of choice. I don't think you saw that coming, this choice of camera. But hang in there, I'll prove my point. With regards to image quality, I have determined three primary pros associated with this camera. Number one is the build quality. This camera is already 65 years old and still working perfectly fine. The second pro is the fact that it uses 120 roll film. And in this camera it gives you a negative format of 6 by 9 centimeters. So on one roll of 120 film you can shoot 8 frames. Such a big negative format has great advantages. It captures a lot of detail and enables you to make big enlargements. The third pro for this camera is the quality of the lens. I have one major con with this camera that in two ways can influence the quality of your images. This con is the fact that we have a viewfinder which is separate to the lens. Even though this viewfinder is incorporated within the camera body, it does not enable you to focus or compose your images through the lens. This creates two issues. The first issue is what we call parallax. You see something, you compose it through the viewfinder and you see because it is offset from the viewfinder that your composition is going to be slightly off on the film. Especially subjects at short distances can suffer from parallax so you have to compensate for that. Subjects further away suffer less from parallax. Issue number two is the fact that you're not able to focus through the lens. There is a focusing ring at the front of the lens which goes from a shortest distance of two and a half meters all the way through to infinity. But this means that you need to either estimate or measure the lens to subject distance to get a sharp photo. We can work around this specific situation to always get sharp images and to explain that I need to zoom in on the aperture and the focus ring. Let's have a closer look at the aperture, shutter speed and the focusing ring of this camera. First of all, when we look at the aperture, we see a range of 6.3 all the way through to 32. And right in between the f11 and f16, we see a red dot. When we look at the shutter speeds, we see a strange scale ranging from the B mode through to 1 25th, 1 75th and 1 200th of a second. Now this does not coincide with shutter speed scales as we know them from our modern day cameras. So when you're measuring your light and you're adjusting your camera, often you have to recalculate to these shutter speeds. When we look at the focusing ring, of course we see a minimum focusing of 2.5 meters all the way through to infinity and at 10 meters we see a red dot also. Now this camera is ideal for using the smallest possible aperture. 
And why is that? Because we, with this camera we want to achieve the greatest possible depth of field. As we cannot focus precisely on our subject with this camera, this is ideal. That means if we're just off focus a little bit, we still have a very sharp subject and overall a very sharp image. When you look at the red dot for aperture and you use that in conjunction with the red dot for focusing, you see that you need a minimum aperture of between 11 and 16 and a minimum focusing distance from lens to subject of 10 meters. This combination will provide you a good depth of field. The smaller the aperture, f16, f22, the larger the distance, all the way up to infinity, the greater the depth of field and the sharper your image will be. So this camera produces extremely sharp images when you take this into account using the smallest possible aperture and a distance of at least 10 and preferably more meters from lens to subject. Now of course using a smaller aperture means slower shutter speeds which is going to in turn mean it's best to use a tripod. I'm going to show you now all the eight images I took on one roll of film with this camera. If you have any questions please put them forward to me. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.